Welcome to the Zen Brain Podcast. This is Michael Pierce, your host. And today we are going to talk about mastering little uprisings and breaking free and asserting your independence from the expectations from the outside world. So if that's a topic that excites you, then get ready for an exciting episode of Zen Brain Podcast. To get to be the expert of your life, you have to get to be comfortable arriving at independent choices, whether or not others agree with you. You can't be an expert and take command unless you break free of the stipulations that come from your peer groups. Among the most beneficial ways to do so is to, by choice, violate other people's expectations by masterminding little uprisings. A little uprising is an act of free will with minimum damaged outcomes. You're merely asserting your independence, letting other people respond however they want. Illustrations include passing up an invitation you would commonly accept or wearing your hair in a different way or placing some uncommon posters in your work area. You've done nothing gravely incorrect, but you're able to anticipate the other people will respond. Now, don't try to excuse or explain these uprisings. If anybody asks, you're just being funny or merely telling them you felt like doing it. And if they press you for an elaborate explanation, simply respond, I value your concern, but I would prefer not to explain my actions at this moment. When I was in my last year in senior high, one of my little uprisings was due to my mathematical homework with strange media. I would turn in my assignments, done in wax crayon on a midget 2 by 2 sheet of paper or on another piece of a cereal box. The other pupils thought I had gone over the deep end. However, as luck would have it, I had an astonishing instructor who was willing to permit my creative thinking. You have not truly lived until you've done calculus in wax crayon. The principle here isn't to act like a total dork or to violate laws that will land you in grave trouble. Your designation is merely to break the unwritten conventions of society and compliance and do things that you are normally expected to obey, but which you have been blindly abiding by. Little uprisings remind you that you forever have an alternative and that you are able to stay independent of other people's responses. Triage is crucial when it comes to your self-growth. In the battleground practice of medicine, the principle of triage calls for splitting up patients into three groups. Those that will expire in an event, whether they get medical attention or not. Those who will come through anyhow, whether they get medical attending or not. And those that will come through only when they get timely medical attending. If resources are restricted, medical officers have to serve members of the third group prior to the first and second group in order to pull through as many people as possible. Triage may likewise help you build up the way of taking command by centering your attention on the most important actions. In that case, you split up your undertaking plans and activities into three groups. The first, undertakings that will fail to have important impact, whether you accomplish them or not. Number two, undertakings that will succeed in any case whether you accomplish them or not. Number three, undertakings that will have a substantial impact only when you finish them in a timely fashion. If you center your attention on the beginning group, you are simply spinning your wheels while more significant undertakings stay undone. If you center your attention on the second group, you are blowing your energy for no meaningful payoff. However, If you have attended the third group, you'll put your time and energy on the most beneficial possible use. In order to center on the most substantial actions, you have to take away your attention from the first two groups. Exercising triage is exceedingly challenging as it calls for repeated stating no to what you might instinctively sense are great choices. It is the time management equal of stating no to injured individuals calling for assistance. 
However, if you fail to get the hang of the art of triage, a lot of worthwhile undertakings will expire needlessly. This procedure is a challenging of awareness. It's simply to lose sight of the large picture when you are staring at an undertaking hollering for your attention. However, you nevertheless have to come up with the awareness to ask yourself, is this the most significant matter for me to be executing right now? Build a list of your group three undertakings and activities and keep it within the grasp at all times. Perhaps it's a list of your central goals, but it could likewise be a list of the things in your life that you wish to attend to, like your wellness, your relationships, and your spiritual applications. Look back at that list on a daily basis to keep reviewing its presence in your brain. This will help you arrive at the hard triage choices when the need springs up. It's simpler to say no to groups one and two when you're able to view the whole battleground. So what are the group three undertakings that are passing away in the trenches, but that may still be pulled through if you reach them in time? Your wellness, your family relationships, your job, your spiritual associations, in order to obtain time to pull them through them, what undertakings from group one and two are you able to pass up? Among the most beneficial ways to step up your brain's anticipatory accuracy is with direct testing. Rather than simply learning from other people, go out and produce your own knowledge. Don't blindly abide by the advice of authorities. Discover what works best for you by carrying on personal experiments. Everybody is different, so what works out for you might not be the same as what works out for everybody else. If you come up with a fresh thought for increasing your effectiveness, try it out and discover what effect it has. Don't dismiss any thought until you have really attempted it. In the process of practice of carrying out the experiments, you will condition yourself to be more productive as you will always be on the lookout for processes to improve. I've taken on some unbelievable and unusual experiences from time to time, several of them documented on the internet. For instance, there was a time that I chose to see if I could, with success, adapt to intermittent sleep. Intermittent sleep has a lot of versions, but the sort, of, the sort I tested was to rest only 20 minutes at one time, once each for four hours, day and night. That's six naps each 24 hours for a complete sum of two hours of sleep every day. Many individuals who try out intermittent sleep can't adjust and give up inside the opening few days, but after nearly a week of vicious sleep loss, I was at last able to adjust. It was a captivating experience that altered my understanding of time. However, the downside was that I fell out of sync with the remainder of the world. I managed to keep it up for five and one half months before finally returning to a regular sleep pattern, primarily for sociable reasons. It was one of the most memorable and generative times of my life. However, it only occurred because I chose to plunge in and test it rather than simply studying about it. You don't have to conduct experiments as strict as intermittent sleep. However, you will certainly benefit by carrying on your own growth tests. Are you more generative while hearing music? Or do you favor complete silence? What style of apparel makes you look and feel your finest? Does your domestic partner respond best to verbal, composed, or kinesthetic manifestations of affection? What effects do you're observing in your body after consuming new types of food? You are able to spend infinite hours engulfing advice from supposed authorities, or you are able to run a speedy test and find out the answers for yourself. For each authority who tells you one thing, you will discover somebody else who states the reverse. What's the most beneficial diet, spiritual practice, or what kind of investing is best? You have to make these conclusions for yourself. It's all right to consult with authorities, but in all instances, you are the final expert. I'm pretty certain that a lot of you are looking for assistance from medical practitioners for assistance in analyzing and restoring your health. At any rate, that's what they're supposed to be doing. I question how many individuals ever investigate their own inner self-talk about what it is inside of us that drives the demand to look externally from us and to other people for their help. 
When you take the time to mull over this question, I'm convinced you'll identify a principle that sounds like the following. I no more have complete control over my brain and body. As if you did, you wouldn't find it essential to look for outside help instead of count on your own inside capacity to help yourself. Right about now, you may be well having a few contradictory notions or thoughts that sound something like this. Hey, it's typical for me to not sustain total control over my brain and body. Or, today I do feel a little susceptible, weak, insufficient, or needy as I now understand that I have not got complete power over my own brain and body. Why is this the case? Not experiencing might over my brain and body. After all, it does belong to me. The fact of the matter is you do bear total management capabilities over either your brain or body. It's that you simply trust that you don't and so you don't conduct yourself accordingly. Today, I don't foresee that you'll accept what I'm stating as truthful. However, my trust is that I may convince you to let me lead you in a way that I feel will make you see the reality on your own. So let's get moving with what you assume as true. I'm not able to sustain and keep total and total charge of brain or body at all times. Let us now assess exactly how constructive it is holding on to a belief like this. Trusting this helps me in knowing what my limits are so that once an issue does exist with my body or brain, I may seek out somebody who's able to provide me aid so that they may be able to help me so that I may begin to feel healthier once more so that I'm again feeling fit with a sense of well-being, protected, secure, calm, content, joyful, with a low stress level and calm confidence that I'm able to take care of myself. I have control over my wellness and it's my concern. I feel like my longevity has been bettered. So in refreshing this, we comprehend our strong belief that we don't have complete limitless and total control over our brain and body at all times. Let me feel... Let me feel fit with a sense of well-being, protected, secure, calm, content, joyful, with a lower stress level and the calm confidence that I'm able to take care of myself. I have control over my wellness and it's my concern. I feel like my longevity has been bettered. Is this truly the way that you feel? You have to attempt and own the feeling that are part of the strong belief itself. I don't wholly, totally, and without doubt sustain any control over my brain or body at any time. And while visiting this thought process, attempt and understand the feelings you have. Being entirely true with yourself, you ought to detect a few or all of what comes next. Does it leave you feeling susceptible, frail, edgy, anxious, insufficient, inferior, or lonely. You feel powerless, glum, and dependent, as though your level of stress has advanced, leaving you weak and weary. I think you comprehend. All this is to state the conviction has linked with it the result explained in the preceding paragraph. Consequently, is this condition linked with the adverse the adverse for you or not you'll likely concur that it's quite toxic at this point if you compare the first one with the second one do you believe they're both stating the polar opposite things about the strong belief if you are able to identify this then may the two of them be honest regarding the strong belief certainly not as they are both entirely and wholly opposite of each other. So the first one and the second one is exact for you. Comprehend what you experience every time you consider the strong belief on its own. How does it make you feel? Rather likely, I'll explain in the second comment, yes? In point of fact, even if you're not specifically evaluating the strong belief, you comprehend that it is truly eating you up inside and working away at you in an adverse manner. 
In order for you to foil that sense of becoming swept away, always due to the way this strong belief makes you feel, it becomes essential to utilize some of your treasured life force to keep these feelings hidden from your aware attention. By doing this, you recognize it, this is strong belief of yours, is siphoning away your critical energy supplies. This energy is what your body and brain require to stay healthy and functional. This is despite everything, the exact purpose of what your critical energy supply is utilized for. So if you're able now to comprehend that the second statement is true and therefore the first statement is false, where do you stand? If you value that the first statement was deduced from an evaluation of a strong belief which as you were being walked through it, you likely agreed with it, right? Consequently, this signif signifies that your subconscious presumed that the first statement was correct even if you were aware, unaware of it. Put it a different way, you bought into a fake idea or a false belief system. That's simply one more way of stating that you weren't being truthful to yourself. Is this truly what you wish to be doing? If it isn't, then this is what you are able to do about it. Reach deep inside your being and make a proclamation that item number one be abolished internally from your body, brain, and life. Now, once again, dig into your depths and ask that the original strong belief itself, not blinking out how harmful this is to you, be cleaned and eliminated from your body, brain, and your life once and for all. So, at this minute, as hard as it's been to follow along, you ought to be experiencing some fascinating feelings inside yourself. Perhaps you feel more there than previous, more together, more industrious or lighter, more cheerful or more peaceful, mighty, more durable, more content, safe and sound, healthy and fit, etc. How would you like to forever feel this way? If that's the case, then make sure that you are telling yourself this and see how you start to feel. Your mind is the engine of your body, and a lot of cultures throughout history have used the brain and mind to handle every function and factor of the body. When you are able to use your brain to aid your body, no part of your life will stay unchanged. A technical enhancement for the mind would, beyond any doubt, be the most influential piece of equipment to own. Your mind controls so many different pieces of your life. Among those is your immunity systems responsible for the status of your health. Your brain likewise manages your patterns of rest and wakefulness, whether you'll arise at a particular time and if you'll have the energy to make it through everyday activities. It regulates your memory and insightfulness, those factors that determine how you will learn and remember. If these brain functions may be augmented to the potential of what one may achieve is infinite. There's an available technology that may indeed do these things in a world of psychology and it's called psychotechnology. More specifically, in this case, it's brain entrainment technology. Brain entrainment technology uses light and sound and, and a lot of assortments of sensory motivation to regulate the brain. The most widespread type of brainwave entrainment uses sound and is known as neuroacoustics or mind sound or psychoacoustics, mind music. It uses sound waves designed in a particular manner to manage the neural frequencies inside of the mind. Your mind continuously drops electromagnetic currents for each of its actions. These electrical charges from your mind may read when electrodes are attached to your head. The indication signs returned are shown on a monitor referred to as an EEG. Light and sound are arousing for the brain and consequently our mental activities is likewise affected along with feelings we get. Neuroacoustics include sound or music that intentionally entrains our brain waves into frequencies that peak all functionality of the brain. Entraining means to pull along after. These frequencies from neuroacoustics pull the frequencies of your brainwaves along after it. Once this is placed beneath sedating music, it generates a total brain-altering experience along with advantages for the receiver. 
This causes a dramatic increase in the amount of endorphins and numerous others that have demonstrated a capability to slow the aging process, increase longevity, and well-being. It may bluntly stimulate the immune function in the body and help sustain peak health or enhance the speed at which a receiver will recover from an illness or disease. Astonishingly, it may both aid you into a gentle sleep and help in perking you up for particular sluggish beginnings of your day, therefore avoiding the need for caffeine. It will advance the capabilities to gain knowledge, better creativity, provide augmented intuition, help in concentration, and remarkably advance personal self-awareness, the lot of which the scientific community refers to as total brain function. Consider the magnitude of this if we may alter our brain states, whether we want then we would be able to command the superfluous or unhealthy places of our brain to take us to and replace them with more susceptible experiences and conditions. It would be as similar to swapping channels on a TV, switching moods and states like depression, pain, jitteriness, and anger. Click into bliss, wellness, intuitive, affectionate, and lucidity. Now, if this technology is beginning to sound familiar, it might be because there are likewise methods available to accomplish many of these same results without the technical equipment or expertise demanded to pull it off. Controlling your brain or mind over matter, however you wish to refer to it, may be achieved by practicing meditative exercises and learning how to assist yourself by tapping into the potential of your mind and your deep subconscious. Self-hypnosis is effective and truly any technique that will bring you into an ease, suggestive mental state sets the stage for practicing mind over your body. Subduing your fears, poor lifestyle choices, enhancing your wellness, alleviating killer tension, and battering your potential longevity are all possible once you take charge of your brain and body to influence your health and your well-being. You are the commander-in-chief of your life. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You are able to attempt to give your power away and pretend to be weak, but the undeniable reality is that you are still in charge. Connect with what's most crucial to you in your life. If you felt responsible for the whole world, what would you wish to change first? If you chose to become an authority at something, what would that be? What may you say about the great spirit that lies inside of you, waiting for the chance to express itself through purposeful action. What truly matters to you, even as you learn to embrace your command, you'll still come across situations where lining up with reality and might isn't adequate. In order to successfully navigate such spots, you'll have to call upon what follows in this podcast and what we talk about when it comes to getting high naturally and waking up to the truth. Thanks for listening. And we will see you next time on the Zen Brain Podcast.